All right. Greetings, salutations, students, strangers, and everyone in between. Mr. Shea here. We are looking at today, turning point in American history, number seven. The last one, students, that we'll be looking at. The terrorist attacks on 9-11. And I'll just say right now, this video uh, does have some footage from the terrorist attacks, uh, as well as some audio. And it's, it's not pleasant. I mean, terrorist attacks, uh, this one resulted in almost 3,000 people dying. So just to uh, start things off, this video gets a bit heavy. And, uh, but it's important to talk about, which is why we are looking at it today. So let's kick it. So what became before? What is important to know about the terrorist attacks on 9-11 is this man right here on the right, Osama bin Laden, is really where we should begin. And I suppose even before that, we should begin at, in Afghanistan. So my students, we were looking at uh, prior to this, the election of 1980, Ronald Reagan coming into office. And prior to Reagan's election, as I mentioned in that video, the Soviet Union had invaded Afghanistan. And that is really where Osama bin Laden in many ways got his start. Bin Laden was born to a very prominent, very wealthy construction family. His father had the construction contracts in Saudi Arabia and a variety of Middle Eastern nations. So his family had a great deal of wealth. Bin Laden was born into uh, this wealthy family, went to university, but ended up going to Afghanistan to fight with the Mujahideen, which is the uh, Afghani forces that were fighting against the Taliban. Those forces were funded by the United States because they were fighting against the evil Soviet Union, the communists. So America, the famous saying goes, the friend of the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And the Mujahideen were very much the enemy of the Soviet Union, thus were friends of the United States. So they received weapons, they received training from the Americans. So Bin Laden fights in Afghanistan, starts very much getting radicalized. As a youth, he was into poetry. He uh, definitely was very interested in religion, but I wouldn't say it was a radical youth. But this is really where Bin Laden becomes much more anti-American and pro-violence. And some of this even before, we'll go back a bit further here, begins in the 1940s. So 1948, the United Nations announces the creation of the nation of Israel after the Holocaust and after World War II. And this New York Times front page here mentioned that fact. And with Israel, just as a reminder of where it is, nation right here at the end of the Mediterranean Sea, the eastern end, it is surrounded mostly by predominantly Muslim nations. And Israel became a place where many Jews from Europe ended up moving to after the horrors of World War II. That action, the creation of Israel, angered many predominantly Muslim nations of the region because the territory, which initially was mostly settled by Muslims, in the state of Palestine, which was British territory in the 40s, gradually was taken over more and more by the uh, Jewish people and the nation of Israel through a series of conflicts. Uh, so the, the conflict and the struggle over this land, which is very holy to Jews, to Muslims, and to Christians, especially the nation or nation, the city of Jerusalem. However, the entire region is central to those three major faiths. So the, the territory in question here has long been uh, 
area where conflict has occurred. So bin Laden very much sees the conflict now, is concerned about uh, Muslims in this region, and that very much shapes his ideas and actions moving forward. So the United States very much plays a central theme in this region because of their support of Israel. And that results in a lot of anti-American sentiment in the region. You see this photograph here uh, of people burning the American flag. And that is very much what bin Laden is seeing and promoting is this idea that America is a negative influence on the Middle East. So bin Laden, uh, with the organization Al-Qaeda, their mission is to use violence against the Americans uh, and governments that support America uh, around the world, not just in the Middle East, but else around the world. So bin Laden using connections, remember his family is very wealthy up until the mid nineties, he was receiving $7 million a year in stipends from his family. So using these connections that he developed in Afghanistan, uh, money that his wealth brought him, uh, turned Al Qaeda into a prominent organization that had a lot of influence, a lot of resources and ability to carry out attacks. Bin Laden was not unknown to the American agencies uh, of intelligence. He had orchestrated attacks elsewhere. Um, and America knew leading up to the attacks on 9-11 that there was something being planned. The problem was, if you look at this image here, there's a lot of intelligence agencies in the United States. And what was revealed in the investigations after the attacks is they did not share their intelligence. The CIA knew some things, the FBI knew some things, but that intelligence was not uh, shared and really understood to the extent that we now know it. And it was a huge intelligence failure in what was revealed in the government investigations afterwards. So Osama bin Laden coordinates with other members of Al-Qaeda to attack the United States using airplanes because they saw there was uh, holes in the security when it came to airlines in America and around the world at this time. So that then leads us into the events on 9-11. So I'm going to show you a bit of a video. This is from the TSA, Transportation Security Agency, that was released a few years after the attacks on 9-11. And it edits together some footage, some audio. Uh, so I am going to let this play. It is sad. Uh, it, some of the images show the planes crashing into the Twin Towers. So it's about four minutes long. Uh, I'm just going to hit next, and that's going to start playing. And then I'll move on afterward. American 11, are you trying to call? The cockpit is not answering their phone. Our number one has been stabbed, and our five has been stabbed. I am going to call from Washington. I am in a situation with American to learn a possible hijack. What's going on, Benny? The crap is erratic again. Problem, very erratic. Right. Ready, talk to me. Eddie, are you there? Eddie? Eddie? The plane just is going to break here. What? It's the 737. It was. Like the world trade. Who are you center. talking to? Oh God! Oh my God! United 175, New York. We have some problems over here right now. We might have a hijack over here. Two of them. Fuel system uh, Listen, on an airplane, that's been hijacked. And things will go well. I'm looking good. I just want you to know, I absolutely love you. I want you to do good. So happy to find things to my parents and everybody. And I just totally love you, and uh, I'll see you in Hi, babe. What are those people going to do? All, all the elevators are blocked out. Oh, 
my god. So both towers are now. Okay, now we have a I got an aircraft that's south east of the White House. Crystal City, just north of Crystal City. Just to the north of your town. Yeah, I'll stop all the parkers. The United 93, that traffic for you is 1 o'clock, 12 miles eastbound, 370. Negative contact, we're looking at United 93. United 93, Cleveland, if you hear the center right then. I got the pitch, the dog. Keep remaining to being. You have the ball, boys. I got United 93, have you got information on that yet? Yeah, he's down. He's down? Yes. When did he land? He did not land. Oh, he's down? Yes, yeah. somewhere up northeast of Camp David. The f flights were selected because of the fact that they were cross-country flights and the terrorists knew that they would have more fuel on them. And when we talk about terrorism, I think it's easy to discredit terrorists as crazy or stupid, but that's very much not the case. Terrorists think things out. Osama bin Laden was a smart man, evil, but you don't want to underestimate evil people because Evil people can do terrible things, especially if they are well-planned. And this was a well-planned attack. So two of the planes flew from Logan, and those were the two that crashed into the World Trade Centers. Uh, then another plane left from Newark International and another from Dulles in Washington, D.C. Um, Cape Cod students, the our uh, military base that is on the Cape, uh, Kids were standing at the bus stops on September 11th, waiting to get picked up when the fighter jets flew over and they were being deployed to try to shoot down the planes before they hit New York. They did not intercept them, uh, but it was a day that I lived through. This is the first of these turning points that I was certainly alive in. My aunt was in the World Trade Center. Uh, she got out, but that day and the aftermath of it was horrific. And if you look at this chart here, 2,996 people died on that day. Um, 
there were 265 people that were on those airplanes in the trade centers, 2,606 people and 125 people were killed at the Pentagon, including my best friend's uncle, uh, who was there trying to respond to these other uh, attacks. So not only was it just the number, it certainly at especially the World Trade Center, uh, there was a huge number of firefighters, 249 firefighters were killed there while responding to the attacks, 71 law enforcement uh, and EMS members as well. This was the biggest attack on America since Pearl Harbor. And not only did we see huge numbers of the attacks uh, killed that day, but also afterwards. So the aftermath of this, uh, there's been hundreds of fire department and law enforcement members in New York that have died because of illnesses that came out of uh, cleanup from the attack, inhaling the dust from those buildings. Uh, so this isn't something that was just isolated. It did continue for a while afterwards. Now, this is a photograph of uh, the Ground Zero, the World Trade Centers, where they were destroyed and collapsed. So New York City had months and months, years of cleanup and rebuilding that it engaged in. Uh, if you've been to New York recently, you have the One World Trade Center tower that has been built. Um, and a lot of these other buildings nearby were torn down and rebuilt as well. So physically, the damage was immense. Uh, Human-wise, the damage was immense. And the response then the government had to figure out. And a lot of things did happen afterwards. For one, Department of Homeland Security was created. Uh, this is the president signing in the act that created Department of Homeland Security, which uh, intends to prevent attacks like this and ensure the safety of the United States. We saw a huge, if you look at this graph here, increase right after the attacks on 9-11, again, about uh, anti-Muslim hate crimes, hundreds just in that single year, because people were so afraid. And when we talk about uh, violence in the United States, it's often because of fear. And 99% of, even higher, 99.9% .9 of Muslims are not terrorists, but the perception, the fear of, of terrorism of Muslims increased, which resulted in a huge amount of uh, hate crimes. Those hate crimes, as you can see, this is, the chart ends at 2015, have continued to rise in recent years, um, which students were going to be spending a class looking at more this week. To respond to these attacks, a uh, little more than a month later, the United States invaded Afghanistan. And Afghanistan, Al-Qaeda had been uh, using as a staging area. They knew that Osama bin Laden had been living in Afghanistan uh, and surrounding regions. So the United States invaded Afghanistan. Uh, the, we are still currently in Afghanistan. So we are gonna, my students also look at a bit about these wars, both in Afghanistan and Iraq. Iraq was a little different in that Iraq was not directly connected to the attacks on 9-11. Um, and Osama bin Laden and Saddam Hussein, very different people. Saddam Hussein had been a uh, leader of Iraq for a very long time, um, committed horrific crimes against his own people. However, it, especially with the uh, Iraq war, one of the motivations and the reasons behind going into Iraq was this idea of weapons of mass destruction that were there that ended up proving out not to be true. So students, we will also be looking at a bit about this war as well. So two international conflicts that the United States got into following the attacks on 9-11 uh, that cost certainly the lives of uh, hundreds of Americans, American service members, as well as uh, incredibly expensive. War is not cheap, and these two combined uh, cost the United States trillions of dollars. The Patriot Act was put into place after 9-11, which 
the point of the Patriot Act is to allow easier collecting of especially electronic communication by the U.S. government. That has some concerns today. We are going to be looking at some of those concerns, students. Uh, so if you're watching this being like, I want to know more info about these things, sorry. Uh, my students are going to be looking at more, so I'm not going to be talking a whole lot about it today. But the Patriot Act does have certainly a bit of concern, uh, and it is now expired. We're sitting here in 2020 uh, in many ways because of those concerns that have raised about privacy issues around the Patriot Act itself. TSA, uh, if you have flown in the United States recent years, you will see the scene as being decently familiar, maybe not smiling as much, but taking your shoes off, going through the security in TSA. Uh, the hijackers on 9-11 were able to get on the planes with some weapons that were acceptable to carry, small knives. These things used to be allowed onto planes, uh, but the security around airports has increased dramatically after these attacks. So this is especially one that you probably have experienced in recent years, and we're going to continue to experience this. When we talk about security after some sort of violent attack, often that does not disappear. It just becomes part of the daily rhythm and routine of life. So those were the attacks on 9-11. Uh, we are still living in the aftermath of those today. So certainly this video could go on till getting here in 2020. But students, we are going to uh, close things out here and uh, be looking in class at a couple more of these consequences that came out of the horrific attacks on that day. So uh, we will catch you on the next video. Students, we're going to be looking at some uh, themes moving forward. So we're done with the turning points. This is the last turning point video. Uh, and we'll move forward from here. So we will catch you on the flip side. Until next time, farewell.